lovely. I think he's cheeky and he's very funny. Absolutely hilarious. I think he's really nice. I watch him in the street all the time. He's funny, he's lovely, and I can't wait to see him. <laughs> yeah, he's really funny. Great guy. I love Bradley. But he's a godfather to our children. So, I mean, he's just like family to us, him and Donna. But he's very funny. Bradley Walsh is fantastic. Great. He's absolutely superb. He's really evil in the street. Well, I love him. Oh, he's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I watched him, I did panto with him when he just gets up there and he just goes. When he goes off on a, tan uh, on a tangent and he, he's uh, doing uh, ad libbing and stuff, he's, he's wonderful, magical. I think he's hilarious. We've seen him in pantomime before and he was great. Ten minutes, Mr. Walsh. What? I can't believe they'd give us this. This is a joke, an absolute joke. Not a washroom, they got plenty of dressing rooms they could have put us in. It's an absolute joke. The times I've done this theatre, I cannot believe it. Oh, Michelle, I'd love, I'd, I'd. That's not really, uh, this is not a dressing room, really. Um, this is, um, this is, uh, this is just the washroom where I've just been washing. And, um, and, uh, we've come back to the theatre because of, uh... Oi, get away from that car! Uh, and um, and and that Michelle, hide in a corner. Love, get in a corner, get in a corner, and um, and so uh, we're here tonight. And uh, I've come in actually to make myself a cup of tea. In uh, in here, we're going to move all the stuff up to our proper dressing room because the uh, because I get on so well with the, the theatre management and stuff. I, f I think you should go now anyway, if you don't mind, because um, I've got to do this. I'm getting very nervous actually. Can you just get up now, hey, please? Because I am getting a bit nervous. And I was a bit cut short. All right, enough's enough. I don't know why I'm changing in here. The manager said I did all right the last time I was here. Come on out, get out. Thank you very much. Twice I hit him. That's all I hit him, just a twice. All right, and I smashed his car up as well. But that does not merit me changing in here. It's a joke. And that is not me, that's Mel Gibson. Go, 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 go. Go. I can't get that off. Go. Will you go? Michelle, get the ironing board out, love, and iron that shirt, for goodness sake. Get your makeup ready. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bradley Walsh. Thank you very much. That's, um, that's very kind. Thank you very much indeed. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here, ladies and gentlemen. But then again, I am on heavy medication. Um, <laughs> Dartford, um, we, for those of you who are interested, we are recording this evening a DVD, and, and which will be on sale later on in the year, just before Christmas, so you can queue up tomorrow. Put your... <laughs> Um, and so, uh, that, so you'll be enjoying this show. I mean, this bit isn't going to be in the, in the show. This is a bit I'm doing now before I actually start. I'm going to start in a second. <laughs> you'll know when I'm going to start, cos I'll nod. <laughs> that'll, that'll be our signal, and then you can join in. I'll, I'll be doing... I'll be walking around just chatting, and then I'll nod, and you'll go, Oh, yeah, it's funny, that. <laughs> um, we don't really know what we're going to call the DVD yet. Uh, we haven't thought of a title. Um, but uh, we were going to call it Live at Dartford. But then again... <laughs> that, to be fair, is a bit of a contradiction in terms, isn't it? <laughs> so... And we didn't really want to uh, confuse anyone who got the wrong intonation on the word live. And they thought <laughs> it was a directive. Bradley Walsh says, live at Dartford. <laughs> I couldn't face that responsibility for the rest of my life, quite frankly. Um, well, he told us to live here. <laughs> I'm so let down. <laughs> Can't we go home? Our home was much better than here. Wasn't it, Mum? Ah, yes. Baghdad. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, before we, 
Just before we start, I've got to say, I get a bit nervous before I come out. I do. Um, I don't often suffer from nerves unless I'm doing a show like this. And uh, just standing there backstage, I had to have a, um, a waz before I come out. <laughs> and um, what's funny in that, love? Um, I just, you know, I don't know if it's just me. You know, when you get nervous and you need a waz. And um, um, that's, all, that's a waz. And, uh, and the thing is, I don't know what, does, is it just me or is it just you lot as well? Does anyone, when you have a waz, does it ever smell of sugar puffs? <laughs> It does, love, doesn't it? Why does it smell of sugar puffs? I don't know. And what? And germaline. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what are you doing? <laughs> sugar puffs and germaline? What have you been eating? And I said to my doctor, I said, uh, I needed to know, and I said, why does my wee smell of sugar puffs when I'm having a slash ode? And he said, don't worry, Brad, it's just protein in your water. I said, but I need to know, because I'm quite inquisitive. And I said, I need to know, why does it smell of sugar puffs? He said, don't worry, it's not a problem. I said, but why does it smell of sugar puffs? He said, listen, it's just that it does it hurt. I said, well, a little plastic toy comes out, it fucking kills me, don't worry about that. <laughs> so, that. So. Well, I've got to tell you, it's, it's really nice. It's really nice coming down to Dartford. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life. I was born in Watford, in Hertfordshire. My mum uh, was from uh, Bells Hill near Glasgow, and my dad was from South East London. And they saw that they split up when I was 14, didn't really get on, hardly surprising. And our, and our house was constantly full of rowing. I mean, it was. It was a very aggressive house and rowing. And I'm, luckily enough, I think I, I, I escaped all that. Wankers! But the thing is... <laughs> but the thing is... The thing is, I couldn't, I couldn't ever, I couldn't ever, that's a very small condom you've got there, mate, isn't it? I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, um, I couldn't ever understand a word my mother, my mum ever said. I mean, she, my mum's from Glasgow, and as a kid, I had to have my sister as an interpreter, because the only one you know from Glasgow, the surrounding area, has quite an aggressive accent, and they sort of spit words at you, no matter what they're saying. I mean, my mum would confront me some days, and she'd... I'll have to have my sister, Kerry, who's my mum, dad, and Ke my sister, Kerry, and my mum would be saying things like, Yay! Hey! Yay! Yeah, yeah! Fuck you, bastard! Get up! You fuck Jesus! Fuck you! Fuck you! Get up! Fuck you! And I say to Kerry, what's she saying? She says, uh, Merry Christmas, here's your presents. <laughs> so... And they fought. My mum and dad fought constantly like cat and dog, literally like cat and dog. My mum would get annoyed, she'd piss on the flowers and scrape the side of the sofa. <laughs> My dad would drop an old four sniffing people's knackers, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Especially in parties, get off, get off. <laughs> we, had, we had no toys, and uh, I can remember... I can remember... Um, down our street, a load of the kids had bikes. Their mum and dad's always bought them uh, presents for Christmas. And, and I was left out of the present department, me and my sister. And they, uh, all the kids down our street had a bike. And I can't remember, uh, if you remember in your mind's eye, there was always one kid whose family couldn't afford to buy him a bike and he had to run after the other kids. They wouldn't give him a crossbar or anything. Poor little bugger had to run because he didn't... Do you remember that kid? Yes, that was me. <laughs> so, so they'd be on their bikes, new bikes, and I'd be running behind them like that. And you know when you're a kid, you don't run properly when you're a kid. You run that funny hoppy skippy type run, don't you? Like... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You look a proper tit, don't you, running those things? <laughs> and they'd be on their bikes, they'd be in tenth gear, I'd be going, for oh, fuck. Oh, f <laughs> then I'd be going, I'd try to improvise, I'd be going, ding, ding, pretend I've got a bell. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> one day, <clears throat> I just had enough of them taking a the piss, so one day I stood on my head. Just stood on my head on the pavement, they all come riding back. I said, what have you done? I said, my chain's come off. <laughs> and um, then we also had... Uh, I had sp everyone... Where have you gone? Where have you... Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we also had every kid down our street had a space hopper. And uh, do you remember space hoppers? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're back in vogue, aren't they? And, uh, and my, my mum and dad didn't have, couldn't afford to buy me a space hopper. And all the kids would have these space hoppers. And they'd be like... They'd be bouncing down the street. And I'd be... Well, that, no, I didn't have one. So they'd be down... They'd, be, they'd begin like that. And I'd be, I'd be at the back with nothing between my legs, just... To, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got plenty now. <laughs> Germaline. <laughs> so... So... I'd be, and I'd be off down the street like this. I'd be... 
nothing. Look at that Pratt no space up a bollocks, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I was sick to death that the kids kept taking a Mickey. So what I did one day, I shut myself in the shed, right? And this is ingenuity for you. This is how bad I wanted a space up on. So I got one of my knackers, right? <laughs> and I put it on the I put it on the bench like that. <sighs> I'd have gone on tiptoes in actual fact. So. And this is how bad you want a space up. I've got a mallet. <laughs> and I hit me knacker about 1,500 times. I <laughs> Till me bollocks swelled up about that big. <laughs> then I've got a tin of orange paint, right? <laughs> Painted the black face on it. I dangled it out of me shorts like that. <laughs> and I was off down the street on me space. <laughs> It was fantastic, and I, I got away with it for years. I got, a... <laughs> I got an award off the mayor for ingenuity and everything. It was wonderful. I feel a bit guilty about it now, taking it for no reason. But, um, and that was, and that was, that was fantastic. Unfortunately, my trousers didn't fit me till I was 32 because the <laughs> swelling never quite went down. But by Christ, I pulled some birds in discos. Um, <laughs> they used to walk up to me and say, "Can I sit on your beanbag?" <laughs> Look again, baby. And the lads used to say, hey, Brad, come into the bar for a drink. I said, yeah, sure. Because <laughs> that's what you do, lads, isn't it? <laughs> You're probably sitting there now going, yeah. Because <laughs> blokes do that. They do. Whether at Sainsbury's. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> sitting home in front of the telly. <laughs> Parties. Volivant, yeah, lovely stuff. <laughs> and you know why we do it, girls? Because we got them. <laughs> so we get married, and then you twist them like that for about 50 years in your hands. And um, I like it, though, I like them, lads, because they don't realise, girls don't realise what it's like, when you, especially when you get in your bath and you, got, and you get the water, the temperature's just right, and you can just dangling them on the top of the water. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's, a, that's the most fantastic feeling in the world. Oh, that's fantastic, that is. Bobbing along, bobbing along. <laughs> if you look down the very dark red, the water's too hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they're all right, they're all right until you get old, because when you get old... <laughs> when you get old, they start dangling down here. <laughs> and you have to tuck them in your sock when you're walking along. Do you know what I mean, mate? You know, don't you, mate? <laughs> and you walk along the street like your legs are on two bungees, like that. <laughs> People go, look, he's got his bollocks tucked in his sock in, look. <laughs> but you can have hours and hours of endless pleasure with your elastic bollocks. You can, you know, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's like them little sponge balls on a lump of elastic and a wooden paddle. You can take them out of your pants and kick them round the room for half an hour. Like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> boing, boing, ding, bong, bong. Catch them in your knickers, fantastic. <laughs> my mum and dad... <laughs> my mum and dad, as I said, split up when I was 14 because my dad couldn't handle the confrontation. My dad, and ostensibly, this is what it's all about. Men are real sort of cowards in a, in, a, in a way. And they won't sort of stand up to it. You know, they won't. And that's what a lot of conflict happens because of that. Simply, I tell you, this is for instance, right? My mum used to tell my dad off constantly, constantly. And my dad would go, yeah, but I... Yeah, but... Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And you've probably done this as well. And girls, you don't realise this happens. But this happens in your house. And the bloke is left in the lounge doing this. You bollock your husband, he'll be standing there, and you'll go, like, my message will go, hey, you, I told you, that's the last time, I told you to put them curtains up, yeah, but do the better that. If you don't put them curtains up, that's it. Or make, I'll tell you what, do the garden. If you don't, yeah, but I think, yeah, but that's it, because that's the last time, yeah, but the thing, but don't tell me, you're you put it useless, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, And then she goes out the room, and you're left in the room, lads, going, And then when she comes back in the room, lads, I'm averting it because she steams back in, she goes, I'm another thing, and you go. <laughs> I put the kettle on. <laughs> but my dad couldn't handle any of that. Oh, so in the end, in the end I had to, uh, my mum and dad, I said, split up, so he couldn't handle it. And I had to live with my, uh, my mum because uh, that was the better option, in fact. Because living with my dad would have been a bit tricky because uh, although 
meal times in the pub was great. <laughs> Bath time in a betting office was ridiculous. <laughs> so we live with my mum, and uh, through an interpreter, of course. <laughs> and she did really well for us, actually, my mum. She was great. She's still alive. My dad died uh, 10 years ago now, 11 years ago. And uh, it was really weird because my mum was convinced I was on drugs as a kid. Because a next door neighbour who I was hanging around with had taken some hallucinogenic drug. And he'd broke, he thought he was like a stunt driver from a film in this, under this drug. So he broke into the carriage, nicked his dad's car, drove around, smashed it up, and ended up in hospital for about six months. And my mum was convinced I was on drugs. And as a kid, I liked to play the odd prank, obviously. But I was sick to death of her. Keep asking, asking and asking, are you on drugs? No, I'm not on, you on drugs. No, I'm not on drugs. And so in the end, I thought, oh, well, bollocks, I'll just say I am. <laughs> so... <clears throat> I didn't really. I said, she asked me one day, I said, Mum, I'm not on hallucinogenic drugs. I would never take a drug like that. I would never take a hallucinogenic drug, break into the garage, nick the car, drive it down the road and smash it up, end up in hospital. I would never do that. Besides, I'm frightened. I can't go in the garage because that big yellow dragon, that pirate ship full of ghosts is very scary. <laughs> <laughs> that freaks her out. So, and she got this new lease of life. My mum my, my ended up in a new lease of life. If you ever get divorced or something, women turn into Madonna. Ba -bam! Even, if even if they're 80. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really weird. My mum even got a tattoo. Just there, on her left breast. <laughs> really odd. You know what I mean? And um, so I couldn't handle living with my mum too, too much because it, you know what it's like, you're living with your mum. I left, I left her Watford when I was 34 and went to live in East London. Now, there's a place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, I went to live in East London. I'll tell you something about East Londoners. There's a, probably a lot of East Londoners here that have moved out to Dartford, live at Dartford. <laughs> and, um, and, so, and the thing about East Londoners, when you talk to them, they all talk in a conspiratorial manner out the corner of their mouth. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> Even if they're not doing anything, they look like they're really shifty. You say, all right, they go, yeah, I'm not too proud. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I've got some stuff for you, don't worry about that. <laughs> what have you got? Can't say, none's the word, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and my father-in-law is just like that. Oh, son, how's it going? Oh, I'm going to <laughs> and when I went, I went, I went to East London to live with um, to live with my girlfriend. I lived in Beckton, in actual fact. And uh, and so he, I met him, and he was great. But he talks in some sort of East London code. You never know what he's talking about. You talk to you talk to anyone from East London, and they, so they often they do this. They go, uh, "I've told him." Say no more. <laughs> I'll say to him, that's your problem. He's only ended up with the other business, isn't he? <laughs> Who has? <laughs> him up the road. You know, the geezer with a funny old dude on his, what do you call it? <laughs> oh, him who's married to the other bird with a dirty, great big thing and a lovely old dude on. She's only ended up with the other business and all I told her, that's it. <laughs> Talking about? <laughs> well, I've told him. Told who? Oh! <laughs> you know. Well, if you don't want to know, I won't tell you. You haven't told me. <laughs> Drives you mad on there for hours. I can't get this. Like, honestly, Jesus Christ, it's like you need an Enigma machine to talk to him. <laughs> you think about Beckton, right? And all that, all that sort of business. And East London is when, when. Uh, like, for instance, my wife wanted me, or my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, she wanted me to get, um, get fit. And I had to, uh, and I had to, she said, I was putting on a bit of weight, to be fair. And she said, Brad, I need you to get fit, because we're going to get married. I didn't know that at the time. But <laughs> she sort of sprung that upon me. And, um, and I had, and I had, and the worst thing about it is, East London, I had to go to a boxing gym. And they're obsessed with boxing, East Londoners. You watch East Londoners talk to each other and go, all right, Dave, all right, Steve, all right, Sam. <laughs> What's that all about? 
I used to drink at a pub called the Paul's Head in Canning Town. And there's a, two bricklayers, Steve Holmes and Dave Phillips, used to walk up to each other every night in a bar, go, all right, Davey Ball, all right, Steve. What's that? <laughs> what are you? Yes. Whoa, nearly edge of sand. Yeah, go on. Why not a handshake? What do you want to drink? That's all it takes. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. I've always wondered if Frank Bruno ever walks up to Nigel Bennett and says, All right, Frank, all right, Nigel, want to build a wall? <laughs> I bet that don't happen. They're mad. And I went to watch... Uh, I went to watch West Ham. And I walked, I walked, walked towards the ground, my father-in-law took me, and I was going to watch this football show. <laughs> And it was the first time I'd ever seen people in full kit going to watch a football match. And Julian Dix was the hero at West Ham at the time. He was left fullback. Julian Dix was a big hard player, you know, a hard player. And I walked past a pub on the corner called the Bowl Inn. And as you walk past, there's blokes there, 50 odd. Big fat gut, no air, pint, fag, pie. <laughs> but they're wearing full kit, proper shirt, shorts. Socks and trainers to the game. What do they think they're going to get a game? <laughs> you know what I mean? What are they hoping for? <laughs> Alan Pardew's going to run out and go, by the way, what's his name? Michael Carrick can't play today. Don't worry, boss. Get that fat bloke in the crowd. He's all right. He's got his kit on. <laughs> Oi, fatty, come down and have a game. Come on, son. Finish your pie first. Barry up. Where ain't nothing. <laughs> And I watched these blokes drinking outside this pub and went, oh, what they going to buy you when you walk in? And they had the name of the player on the back, and as they turned around, it said dicks across their back. <laughs> it's mad. And this is, and, not, and when you go into a football match now, what happens is they have to search you. And I got a search going into this football match in West Ham. And they searched me for cans of beer. So two blokes in front of me had a can of beer each. Oh, can we have that? What's the matter with that? Now, they get, they get confiscated, but that's okay. I don't see a problem with that. If that's the case, though, you know, like, round-wise, a can of beer is that round, it's probably about that big, isn't it? How does the bloke with the fucking drum get in? <laughs> What's he, stick out his jumper? <laughs> Check it. Search, arms up. <laughs> I mean, that is just ridiculous. <laughs> so if you're going to sit and watch a game, I mean, it all gets a bit hostile and the natives turn a bit restless. If someone throws a can at you, the likelihood is that they've drunk the contents anyway and an aluminium can ain't going to work, but be ready, cos a fucking drum's coming down in a minute it's going to hit your strand the back of the head. <laughs> Christ knows who's going to cop the piano. It'd be like that. <laughs> It's just unbelievable, right? And like I say, I, ha I had to get fit, right? I had to get fit. And my missus says to me, my girlfriend at the time, she said, that's it, Brad, we want you jogging, get down to boxing gym and all that sort of stuff. I said, all right, fair enough. I said, I said well, how do I'll go training with you. How do you get fit? And my, my missus my missus said, uh, horse riding. <laughs> well, that's the horse getting fit, isn't it? <laughs> You're just sitting on the back of it running around the field, isn't you? That's bollocks. You're not getting fit at all, that's the horse. Horse is as fit as you want, but you're just sitting there going, ha-ha, oh, that's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> if you really want to get halfway through the field, halfway round the field, if you want to get fit, swap over. <laughs> that's what you want to be doing. Imagine the horse stopping and going, well, oh, fat bollocks, my turn, off you get. <laughs> so I had to go... <laughs> and I had to go jog jogging. With all the boxers. Oh, Jesus. Have you ever been jogging? What's that all about? If jogging is so good for you, why aren't they laughing? <laughs> you watch joggers, they're like this. <laughs> Fuck it, do me a favour. If it's so good, they should be going like this. This is what makes me... People go in for the London Marathon, they ain't done any running during their life. They get to 85, they want to go in for a fucking marathon. <laughs> the 
it's all the octogenarians. What's the matter with them? What are you going to do? I'm going to run a marathon. No, stay home and die. Don't run a marathon. <laughs> you see them in the London Marathon, they're at the back like this. <laughs> Full kit. <laughs> Commentators at a snail pace walking along. Are you enjoying this year's marathon? Piss off, I'm still in last year's marathon. <laughs> it's like, why? Why? I just don't get it. I really, really... I just don't get it. It's beyond me. So I had to go to the gym. And uh, they put me on this machine. And you've got to pull the strings down. Well, they're not strings, are they? That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like a yo-yo, but heavier. You know? <laughs> oh, look at him with the string. <laughs> Let's all go jogging. So you've got to pull these weights down, right? You grab hold of them, they spread it, and the lads are, the lads are blinding. Go on, Brad, you can do it. And I've got this... It's two hours, right? Two hours. I'm like... Fuck it now, lads. I... No good. Two hours of doing that is crap. Because you get in the shower, you can't lift the bastard soap, you lot. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. We ended up, uh, we went on our first holiday. And uh, I said, she said to me, uh, my wife, she said, uh, you must have said she's my girlfriend at this time, I'll tell this to you. And she said, oh, we're going to go on holiday. I said, oh, great, good, I'll go and get some uh, pamphlets. Uh, not pamphlets, brochures. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I need a pamphlet? I know how to go on holiday, that's all right. <laughs> Page A, <laughs> one, pack. <laughs> Two, walk to the airport. <laughs> I don't need pamphlets to go on holiday. I'm worldly wise. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> so. <laughs> I got a brochure. <laughs> I threw the pamphlets in the bin. So I got, uh, I got these brochures and I got them to go to the, uh, to the West Indies. I thought all oh, Caribbean's going to be great. And I wanted to show William and I wanted to pick a lovely hotel and stuff. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, I've got, the, I've got all the brochures. She said, did you get rid of the pamphlets? She said, yeah, I've got them. Got, them. <laughs> got rid of the pamphlets. Say, don't worry about the pamphlets. They're gone. Forget the pamphlets, they're no more. I burnt them. <laughs> Along with my gym ticket. And the saddle off your horse that you're not going to ride anymore. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so I said, oh, yeah, I've got these. I should be great. I've got a she said, good, because we're going to go to the Lake District. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever been to the Lake District? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why is the point of that? It's two weeks. It pisses down. That's all it does. <laughs> 364 days a year it rains. The other day it snows. It's crap. <laughs> It's boring. It's just walking about for two weeks. What's the point of that? Your mental case. <laughs> and I've had to go. I want to be sitting on my arse with a margarita, but no, I've got to walk around in sheep shit for a fortnight. <laughs> because I'm a new boyfriend. Yes, let's go. <laughs> Quick, pack, bring the pamphlets. We'll need them. What is that all about? The Lake District. Jesus H. Christ. 
Even if you walk in the latest, you walk up and down hills and it pisses with rain. The food is crap. <laughs> oh, God, it's two weeks of walking about. And this is the worst part of it. Normal man in the street has 52 weeks a year, right? So, of course he does. Everybody has 52 weeks a year, <laughs> even if you're royalty. <laughs> Not just the normal man in the street. If you don't believe me, there's pamphlets on it. Read them, it'll tell you. <laughs> so, it's just... The pamphlets for that are just next to the shelf where it's germline for vag use. It's down there. <laughs> so... Playing cricket now. So... I forget what I am. So... 50 weeks a year, people work. And they walk to work. And they hate going to work, and they walk to work. But for two weeks a year, they go on a walking holiday. So for 50 weeks a year, they're like this. <laughs> oh, don't make me go to work. <laughs> oh, please, I don't want to go to work. Oh, no. But for two weeks, stick a rucksack on their back and they're like that. <laughs> wow, I'm walking. <laughs> Fucking this is great. <laughs> I've never walked like this before. <laughs> it's like a new revelation. Wow, oh, I'm good. Bobolat, big boots, rucksack. <laughs> so we're there, two weeks. Jesus, my missus is uh, quite fit, goes down the gym a lot. <coughs> <laughs> and uh, she's like, bloody Paula Radcliffe, Pew, she's off. Because <laughs> I'm the bloke, I've got to carry all the bags. <laughs> so I've got this rucksack, the size of a small town. <laughs> One more cup, I'm gonna be like buck a fucking roo. I'm gonna kick it all over the fucking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eleven days on like this. <laughs> My missus is going, come on, come on. She turns her back and I'm going. <laughs> Two weeks in her late dizzy, I'm like. You what, love? No, 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 I'm glad we didn't go to Tenerife. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, another mountain. <laughs> Even the sheep are like this. There's a pub near Lake Windermere. I think it's called the Lamb and Flag. So he sat there for lunch. And I'll never forget it. Alan and Carol from Newham. <laughs> sat down. He turns around to me and he went, Oh, it's you. I went, yeah, it's definitely me. <laughs> but he always said, Oh, it's you. I said, Yeah, it's definitely me. He went, Isn't it great? <laughs> I went, No, quite frankly, I think it's crap. <laughs> by this time, by the way, my girlfriend had gone to the bar, right? I couldn't get in the pub because the doors weren't wide enough. That <laughs> fucking racks up I've got on me, back. <laughs> oh, I'm in. And he said to me, I right, great, he really is. Going, are you enjoying it? I said, no, I'm not enjoying it. He said, listen, he said, but the thing is, it's, it's just a change from work, isn't it? I said, it is. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a postman. <laughs> now, I'd be honest, I'd tell you if I made that up. So for 50 weeks a year, he's got a bag around him and he's going... <laughs> but take the bag from there and put it on his back. He's like... <laughs> Whoa, we're up. <laughs> oh, God. Almighty, it's just... just unbelievable. I ended up, um... We got married, right? We got married in a church called Thaden Garnon. It's in, in Thaden, it's in... <laughs> Where's that? Sorry, lover. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, well... <laughs> For those of you who didn't hear her, she went, Where's that? It's near, 
It's near Thaden Boyes, near Epping. Oh. <laughs> That's it, you've stopped me in mid-flow <laughs> to ask me a question and you've just gone, oh? <laughs> do, you know, do you know where that is at all, darling? No, you don't. <laughs> you've never been to Epping? No, no, OK. Do you, have, you, have you ever been out of your own home? <laughs> have, have you ever, have, do you live in Dartford? You don't live in Dartford. Where do you, where do you live, darling? Hartley. Hartley. OK, and whereabouts is that? Is that nice? Seven miles along the road. Seven miles along the road. <laughs> You're quite mysterious, aren't you, my love? <laughs> I've, got, I've got a sort of an aura from you. You're, you're quite scary. With your other two mates, will you be round the cauldron in the morning? <laughs> Don't say sorry. Don't say sorry. You're on the Christmas DVD. <laughs> You're not getting paid, it's so bollocks. <laughs> well, it's nice. Thanks, thanks for... Thanks for um... So... Um, are you, now you've done me now, love. I've got no idea who I am. I'm getting married. I'm getting married, precisely. In Thaden Garman, uh, St John's Church, Thaden Garman, near Thaden Boyce, in near Epping, which is nowhere near Hartley, which is seven miles up the road here from Dartford, <laughs> which is where that young lady lives, so avoid at all costs. <laughs> you don't want to be driving through Hartley and she jumps in the middle of the road and goes... <laughs> where are you going? I'm going to Thaden Garland. No, you're not. <laughs> so, so we get married, and um, and the crazy thing is, this is lads again not making themselves look stupid, not wanting to be set, not wanting to look a tit. And I've got all my mates in the church, and you know when you, I go to church. This is the thing. I love churches. A lot of people don't believe this, but I love churches. You see, and people normally only go to church three times a year. It's either christening a, flu fu a funeral. <laughs> it's, uh, that's your fault, love. <laughs> I've said funeral now. It's either christenings, funerals, or weddings, right? So when you go to church, and, and this is what, because if people who don't turn up regularly, this is what the vicars do. The vicars start the songs too high deliberately just to fuck everyone up. <laughs> I'm sure it happens. Like my mates all turn up to the wedding, they're all sitting at the back because they don't want to, because they have to sing. And when you're at school, you only le learn little bits of the hymn. You don't actually know the whole the hymn, but the, the vicar knows all the whole hymn. It's like, it sounds like, our wedding sounds like Old Trafford, like the crowd would come. It was unbelievable, honestly, it's true. So you'd be sitting there, and all my mates would be in the back, hiding, keeping their heads down, they're going, There is a green hill, far away, without a city wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steady on that. The vicar would be like... Because <laughs> they don't want to make themselves look too much of a tit. And, um, and, so, and this is what the vicar does. He starts the songs too high. Just to fuck it. You watch. Next time you go to church, you go like this. He goes, <clears throat> him, him number 54, page 20, everyone. <laughs> morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken. By the end of the song, you're like Norman fucking Wisdom. <laughs> well, I can't get on my wife's shoulders to get to the end of the song either. <laughs> I had to take a Moroccan tumbling group to form a pyramid so I'd get on the van, I'd get on the top. <laughs> and you watch, you watch Songs of Praise. It's celebrity gone mad now because Songs of Praise is like an audition. <laughs> Honestly, it's true. It's true. Uh, it's unbelievable. Like, it is just gone completely bonkers. For instance, our church normally, you get 30 people in on a Sunday morning. All right? Songs of Praise comes, the TV cameras comes. It's like ivory. <laughs> you can't get in there. You can't buy a ticket for love, no money. And you watch them sing, watch people on Songs of Praise as the cameras come across and they start singing, they go... <laughs> and as the cameras going up the pew, they're going... Fuck <laughs> <laughs> off.
But it also works in your favour, right? Because we know songs, vicars don't know. And we took our vicar, my vicar, on, our, on my stag night. It was great. <laughs> because we went to a lap club. And it was really funny watching him at the back of the room going, Get your tits out for the lads. Get your tits out for the lads. We went, to, we went on a honeymoon, right? We went on a honeymoon. We got married and we went to um, Disney World. Have you been, ever been to Disney World? Yeah. This is my impression of Disney World. Two weeks we had. My impression of Disney World. Just two weeks of queuing up, because we're good at it. And just to wind you up, there's signs through the park that says 40 minutes to ride, 30 minutes to ride, 20 minutes to ride, or 10 minutes till you kick someone's teeth in, because it just drives you mad. Anyway, first night of the honeymoon, we was, in, um, <coughs> we was on this, this, uh, this beautiful hotel. It was called Lake, a Lake Buena Vista Hotel, overlooking Lake Buena Vista. <laughs> so we're in the hotel. My wife's on a bed, right? First night of the honeymoon, Disney World. I'm going to take on a white knuckle ride through the land of sex. I'm really going to get stuck in. I'm not going to take any prisoners whatsoever. <laughs> My wife is on a bed you could land a fucking plane on. It is massive. <laughs> I'm in the ensuite bathroom like that. I'm looking pretty good. I haven't got a stitch on. I'm going, Phew. you know, I've splashed out on a new bathrobe. That's because I've got a urine problem. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sugar puffs. <laughs> First night, Disney World. Sex is on the menu. My wife is fit, but I'm going to catch her in the end. Don't you worry about that. I burst into the broom. I went, come on, baby, let's do it. And there was a queue at the bottom of the bed. <laughs> there was a sign in front of me that said, 40 minutes to ride. And I thought, well... We, had a, we actually had, didn't have too bad a time in Disney. It was really, really good. It was, it was, it was a great time. And then, oh, then we went on a cruise. So we've picked up this boat. We've driven to Miami, picked up this boat and gone around the Caribbean on a cruise. Have you ever been on a cruise? Yeah. On, a, on a ship, big ship? Yeah. Unbelievable. I've got to be honest. Those of you that have never been on a ship, this is what it's like. And for those of you that have been on a ship, you can bear me witness. This is absolutely what I... I've never been on a big ship before. And I was crapping myself. I thought, I'm not too keen on this. I'd seen Titanic. I'm fucking hell, not having <laughs> First day of the cruise, I'm like this. <laughs> I'm not on the ship, I'm pissed on the quayside, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we get on the ship, and the first thing that happens to you when you get in your cabin. And the cabins, you know when they show you, you know if you ever get a cruise and the, and the picture, you see a little picture in the brochure of the cabin, that's actually how big the cabin is. <laughs> my wife gets out to my wife, get out of the room! She said, what, I'm going to open the fridge, I ain't got the room, just get out. <laughs> Used to turn over at night and the bloke in the next room say, don't take all the quilt. <laughs> we're tiny, we're tiny rooms. First thing that happens when you get on the ship, <clears throat> captain comes on and it goes, ding dong. There's a challenge, Captain speaking. Please, will you all go to the master stations? This is regulation uh, for our cruise line. Please go to your master stations, pick your life jackets in your room, please. Bring them to the ballroom. We are going through an abandoned ship drill. This is an abandoned ship drill. This is not for real, ladies and gentlemen. Please come to your master stations. Thank you. So, we all pile up to the... All got to think, I've got me the uh, doodah under the, what do you call it? All right. So... <laughs> So they're all in the ballroom. There's about 300 people in this ballroom. And, all got... and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, right, please uh, place all... The... And they do them with you. Please place the life jacket over your head. So you place the life jacket over your head. And say, now, <clears throat> get the tapes, pass the tapes around your body twice, and tie them in a neat double bow towards the side and front of your body. Now, <laughs> I don't want to be old-fashioned, but if the ship is sinking, I fucking don't care whether that knot is around the front or around the back or around... <laughs> 
I don't want to be getting in a lifeboat and someone saying, that knots a bit more round the back, sir. <laughs> I think you better get to the back of the queue. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, so I'm just to be getting in the queue. You stand there for the next 20 minutes going... <laughs> I want to miss me place! <laughs> and then they say, put them up, they give, they give you these... Uh, <clears throat> so you put them on and they give you these... Um, they, 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 what they, to save your life? They give you like a, there's not shark repellent, first aid kit, food or a raft. You get a whistle. That's all you get, just to save your life. Now you're going to be bobbing around in the Atlantic Ocean and you get a whistle. The, all of these cost about 10 grand. They give you a whistle, cost about 5p from a sherbet dip dab bag, and that's supposed to save your life. And they said, what you've got to do is put these over your head and use these for attracting attention. Well, if they're that good, why don't they give them to ugly women on the way into discotheques? Because that would be perfect. <laughs> just through string fullers over your head, <laughs> shag me. That'd be perfect, but no. And blokes as well. So now, you're in the Atlantic Ocean with a whistle. <laughs> if, God forbid, the ship never goes down, but that's supposed to save your life. And this is the most amazing thing, right? <clears throat> the captain then says, this is unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can't find a way to a lifeboat, please make, put these, you tie the, <laughs> make your way to the promenade deck Walk towards the edge of the boat, the ship, I'm sorry, walk towards the edge of the boat, the ship. <laughs> Pass your arms and cross them in front of your body, thus, and quietly and calmly step off into the water. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> you step off into the water, it's 50 fucking feet! <laughs> I wouldn't step off into a swimming pool, never. <laughs> Are you mental or what? Oh, yeah, all right, then, see you. Turn up. No, bollocks! No, I'm not! I paid for this holiday, you fucking step off! Get me another boat, here now! Just calmly step off into the water. Fuck! Oh. And never mind the captain being brave and going down with his ship, that's all bollocks! He only wants to go down with a ship because when he gets to water level, he can just fucking step off, can't he? Just like... <laughs> That's what he's doing. That's his game. <laughs> and what happens when you get in the water? Oh, you've got this whistle. Now, this is madness. Who the hell is going to hear you bobbing around the Atlantic Ocean with a little plastic whistle? <laughs> it didn't work for Leonardo DiCaprio, and that was in a film. <laughs> and he had all the crew with him. He had the director, the producer, everyone. They didn't hear him, he still died. <laughs> picture, the, picture the scene in the Atlantic Ocean. mind the fellow's going to come and rescue is an RAF seeking helicopter pilot inside of which by the way it's 110 decibels he's wearing a crash helmet and earmuffs <laughs> but he's still going to hear you bobbing around the Atlantic with your little plastic whistle I don't think <laughs> imagine the noise in the cockpit Imagine a conversation in a cockpit. I can hear a whistle. Bollocks. <laughs> You're just showing off. <clears throat> and what happens if a shark comes to get you? A real shark with the ump. <laughs> Not like sharks in them bloody sea life centres swim up to you at lunchtime, stick their head out of the water and go, got any cake? <laughs> I mean, real sharks. <laughs> Can you imagine a head shark going, Oh, lads, he's got a whistle. <laughs> Uh, 
it's unbelievable. Next time you get on a jet, if you're flying away on holiday, sit at the back of the plane, take it nice and easy. This is a big icebreaker. I do this every time I go away. It gets people in a jovial mood because everyone's a bit nervous about flying. Um, but uh, just do this. It just does break the ice. When the captain speaks, this captain speaks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Captain Phillips uh, speaking. Go to everyone. <laughs> Fucking hell, not Captain Phillips. <laughs> Mark my words, everyone on the plane will be going, why, well, what's the matter with him? What's he mean? What's he mean? <laughs> what he mean? I don't know what he means. <laughs> I mean, the smell in the cabin would be unbelievable. You're only having a laugh, aren't you? <laughs> what happens to you when, you when you come home off your honeymoon? And then, you, you, you know, it's sort of... That's it then, isn't it? Gardening, work, your job, that's it. You've got to try and keep the excitement in, in your life. You do. I mean, even now, my wife, you know, will go into the bedroom and my, my wife will say, go on, tease me, tease me. And I'll go, fat ass, fat ass. <laughs> you know. And... But... I mean, what have you got to look forward to? You'll be there, on, you'll be there, in your front room, after Sunday afternoon, on the beer. <laughs> all that sort of stuff, you'll be lying, all the dribble will be coming out of your mouth. Uh, 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 uh. Oi, leave that on, I'm watching that. <laughs> That's what your life is left for. That's all it is now. And then you'll get cramp in one leg. Have you ever done that? Where one of your legs goes to sleep? Jesus, that's painful, that. You'll be lying there all afternoon, you get up and you go, Oi! No, don't do that! <laughs> cool, you bastard. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> and you're left, then. And this is the odd thing. Right, so when you get older, you know, watch men. This is what happens to men when they get older. Why is it when men get older, their waistbands get higher? <laughs> you watch, this is true, watch this. As you get older, there'll be some gentlemen here this evening will be the end product of what I'm talking about now. <laughs> you can spot them as they're walking out. I am 44, right? This is, well, you look at the age of 44. This is 54. <laughs> Sixty four. <laughs> Seventy four. Still a remnant of his space opera, that is. <laughs> and I got an uncle John, right? Who's just like this. Unbelievable. Walks around like this. He can't dress himself. He just, he's on his, he just walks around like this. Sometimes, because he can't dress himself, he'll have a bit of shirt hanging out of there like that. Because he forgets. Sometimes he's not even wearing a shirt. They can't, you know, they can't do their barnet. They can't do their hair, because they can't really, uh, you know, the old uh, rheumatism sets in, they can't do it. It's all like this. This is what happens to you when you get old. Yeah. And as you get older, your feet, your feet turn to ten to two. <laughs> and you walk along the road hanging onto imaginary handrails. <laughs> you watch old blokes like that. <laughs> if you know anyone like this, 
You can have hours and hours of endless pleasure because if you call them by their name, it takes them ages to turn around like an oil tanker. <laughs> it's true, they'll be walking along the street like this and you can go, Hey, Charlie! And they'll go... And I always carry a map of Africa. <laughs> just about there. <laughs> Doesn't happen to women, only happens to men. <laughs> women just go mental. <laughs> For instance, like, if you ever, have you ever had a pair of shoes ruin an evening out? Why does that happen? I've got, fuck off, I didn't even buy the shoes. I have not, I don't, you know, I don't. You know, and she, I come down the other night, we was going out, I'd been ready for an hour, I'm ready to rock, you know, and my missus comes down the stairs, she how do I look? I say, you look lovely, darling, you look it's beautiful. Today is the moment I met you, can we get in the cab? Because we're late. She goes, yeah, but how do I look? C come on, you look really good. She goes, what pair of shoes goes with this outfit? Oh, fuck. <laughs> ask me one on nuclear physics, please, don't ask me that. <laughs> What pair of shoes goes with this outfit? Quick, I'll be, it don't matter. Yes, it matters what pair of shoes goes with this outfit. We don't, honestly, come on, for once in your life, make a decision. Them ones. What's the matter with these ones then? <laughs> and then she'll go up the stairs. But now, well, now I ain't even had a row, I haven't started. She'll go up the stairs. Fucking shoes, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bringing Jesus into the fact that she can't choose a pair of fucking shoes, you know what I mean? As if it's my fault or his fault. As if Jesus. What? I said, why have you brought Jesus into it? Well, he must have worn shoes. What are you talking about, your mental case? 2,000 years ago, can you imagine him with his disciples in the desert? What do you reckon, lads? The flip-flops or the lace-ups? What do you think? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's bonkers. It's just women. And, like, when we had the baby, our boy's called Barney. I come in one night, I'll never forget it. I was working in London, I'll come in, and I wanted to watch the football. My missus and son were there. We didn't, we ain't, we just got a normal front room. No stage or backdrop or nothing like that, so... <laughs> So I've got the zapper and I'm there and I'm zapping through the car. I've got to watch the football. My missus is going, Brad, oh, Brad, stop watching that. Look at him. Look, look, look at him. He's smiling. And, you, and like all lads go, yeah, well done. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know, they're smiling. How hard's that, for fuck's sake? You know, he's smiling. Smiling. Look at him. He's smiling. Oh, he's smiling. Don't watch. Hey, hey, don't watch that. Watch this. He's only smiling, love. Don't tear the arse out. He's smiling. Come on, he's, I want to watch the football. He's smiling. Look at him. He's smiling. Oh, he's. And then they start that stupid talk, don't they? You know what I mean? He's smiling, and he's smiling. <laughs> he's smiling, he's smiling. Then the mum comes over, he's smiling, he's smiling. Once I wanted the kid to go, the word's fucking smiling. <laughs> he's smiling. Watch him, look at him, he's smiling. Look at him, he's riding the Kawasaki 500 after I switched the telly off and look, but no, he's smiling. It's easy, hands free, eyes shut, piece of cake. Shut up. <laughs> You're not looking at him, he's smiling. Yes, love! Well, of course he's smiling, he would be, wouldn't he? He sits around all day, you wipe his ass for him, shove one of your tits in his mouth, I'll be laughing my fucking head off. Never mind smiling. <laughs> no wonder he's smiling. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's bang out of order, ladies and gentlemen, it really is. Listen, you've been, you've been a lovely crowd. You've been a really lovely crowd. Thank you for coming out. I really appreciate it. Safe journey back to Hartley. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it disco? Someone got a keyboard in. <laughs> Oh, I'm dancing like my dad. Go. <laughs> Who is it? Someone on the phone? Give us the phone here. Is it someone ringing? Let's give us the phone. Go on. Call them back. I'll speak. I'll speak. Come on. Give us the phone. Seriously? Was it someone ringing? Come on. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get my phone and I'll ring you one night in the middle of when you're performing. <laughs> give me the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. If I don't see you before, have a lovely, lovely Christmas. Is it too early to say that? No, it's not. All right, we'll have a nice Easter. <laughs> I'll see you all very, very soon. Good night, God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.
I, uh, before I go, I must just quickly tell you that um, please support your local theatre, folks. It really is. It's a fantastic gig, this. I love working this. I did Panto here. Um, I'm going to be doing some Shakespeare here as well, which um, <laughs> later on... <laughs> Any Shakespeare fans in? <laughs> Are there? <clears throat> Any Shakespeare fans in? Seriously? OK, right. It's not like this, is it, though, Shakespeare? It's a bit boring, isn't it? <laughs> you know, there's, there's no set like this in Shakespeare. No comic, no even... Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Shakespeare. Nothing like that. <laughs> it's just a bloke all on his own. My daughter, my daughter took Shakespeare in her A-levels. What good is that to her in normal life? <laughs> what is she going to do? Walk into a news agent and say, Prithee tell. <laughs> Have thou's twenty Rothmine a box of matches? <laughs> Why, no, fair maid, but we have the Benson and Hedges with the tip of a thousand filters. <laughs> They're there on yonder counter. <clears throat> it's true, you watch. You watch Shakespeare, right? This is, this is Shakespeare, right? You watch it. Bloke, cloak, crown, flip-flops. <laughs> Shut up. Now it's getting good. <laughs> Luke. Luke, remember the force, Luke. <laughs> what a great film that was, Star Wars, ladies and gentlemen. And a wonderful actor, Sir Alec Guinness, playing the fart... The fart? Playing the part. <laughs> Play... <laughs> playing the part of Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> now, it was a good casting, that. But you know, if they'd, have, if they'd have cast that film now, they'd have given that part to someone like Sean Bean, because he's trendy. <laughs> but that wouldn't have been right, ladies and gentlemen, because Sean Bean is from Sheffield. And that wouldn't have been right. <laughs> Luke! Luke! Remember the force, lad! <laughs> Luke. Get back, get whip each fed, tear Pemmerdale. <laughs> Don't go near the nasty planet. <laughs> oh, you hear voices, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Star Wars, right? Oh, yeah, I am, yeah. <laughs> I do, I hear voices. But it's not like I'm I am a bit possessed. I'm not by the devil or nothing like that. I'm possessed by George Formby. <laughs> It's quite scary, because it's like the Exorcist film. I've been to Harley Street and everything to get, to get uh, treated, but it doesn't work. I've had loads of pills and all sorts, but it just don't happen, right? I can lie in my bed. It's really bizarre, because I'll be sitting, all my family, just like the Exorcist film, be around my bed. be lightning and the thunder coming out the ceiling. <laughs> and I'll sit bolt upright and bed, my head will turn 360 degrees. It all goes green, and I puke up over everyone. <laughs> and just as they're cleaning it off, I go, Turned out nice again, isn't it? <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a bit scary, that. <laughs> they had... Uh, there's, a, there's a book called The Making of the Film, Star Wars, and I've got it at home. It's an annual. It only comes out once a year. <laughs> and um, there's a page devoted to uh, the part of Darth Vader, which was played by David Prowse, who was originally the Green Cross Code Man, six foot five, big lad. And he thought his voice was going to be used on the finished product. Well, of course, it wasn't. It was dubbed on by a great black actor called James Earl Jones. But he honestly thought his voice was going to be used. Dave Prowse on the finished product of Darth Vader. He is from Somerset! <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> Obi-Wan was right to keep your sister away from I, wasn't it? <laughs> it just is. 
It's just very, very, very bizarre. And so Shakespeare. And you know why Shakespeare... You watch Shakespeare, goes, Thou art this, thou that. Thou est artist, thou, but thou is dark, is that. <laughs> it's bollocks, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> what's that all about? They ought to give it a proper actors, but they won't give it a proper actors because proper actors, oh, they are the Royal Shakespeare Company, of course they're proper actors, but lads that want to do it because there's no money in it. It's like tuppence eight me a week. Do you know what I mean? Like lads, they all, Michael Caine and them don't want to do it. I mean, Michael Caine and someone like Bob Hoskins would be brilliant in, uh, in, uh, in something like, can I borrow your glasses, mate? Can I borrow your glasses, please? I'm going to do an impression of Michael Caine. Pass him glasses forward. Thanks, mate. Now, I'm going to do an impression of Michael Caine, right, in Hamlet. And this, I bet you pulled some ugly birds with ease on, mate, ain't you? <laughs> hey? <laughs> hey? Fucking hell. You want to chuck these in a bit and get yourself a Labrador, mate? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's the oil and vinegar you got on the lenses. That's the killer. You can't see bugger all out of them. <laughs> Half my your tits look big, love these. <laughs> Oh, they are big, are all. <laughs> Everyone, jump on, take your shoes off, bit like Bouncy Castle. Right. <laughs> Michael Caine in Hamlet. <laughs> to be, <laughs> or not to be. <laughs> that is the bloody question. <laughs> or better still, Michael Caine and Bob Hoskins in Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> First, I'm going to be Michael Caine. Have you noticed all impressionists do that? They tell you they're going to do because they're shit. <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Hey, can't hear. Sorry. I don't want to come off now. <laughs> oh. I'm being Michael Caine now. <laughs> Romeo, Romeo. Where for art thou Romeo? I'm going to be Bob Hoskins now. <laughs> I'm over here, you prat. <laughs> See, it's better, isn't it? I think it's better with proper actors. Here, mate. You can have them back. It's a shame you didn't see that. That was funny. <laughs> Look after yourselves, have a safe journey home, and I'll see you all in the bar. Good night, God bless, see you soon. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>